Today I'm going to be looking at my favorite books that I read in 2022. Now this is a fairly wide variety. I like to read a lot of different books, so different genres, uh, that kind of thing. Um, I have also written an article on this, so I will link it below just in case you want to see some of the synopsis. Like if you want to read it, I definitely advise like all of these books, but of course everyone has different tastes. So let's just dive right in. Uh, my first book, I'm actually going in order that I read them last year as I I use Goodreads as a way to keep track. I actually started using Goodreads because uh, I once read a book and the whole time I was like, I think I read this before. It's vaguely familiar, vaguely familiar. And just one scene at the end of the book made me be like, oh yeah, I definitely read all of that before. <laughs> so that's why I started with Goodreads. Um, I also do like how they have the uh, yearly reading challenge this year, or I guess last year. <laughs> I actually beat my challenge by two books, so that's pretty good. I, I enjoy that. So anyway, the first book that I recommend that I read last year is actually a graphic novel called Inkblot. Um, actually, it was given to me by my friend Linda as a gift, and I just adored it. It's a kind of time traveling abomination of a cat that's going through not just time but realities dimensions and making chaos anyway it's by emma i believe it's pronounced Gilbert. i'm not sure don't come at me for that i just i'm awful at names but delightful i'm definitely going to get the next one it's i'm pretty sure already out but i just have to get it Next book is uh, Limited Truth, which is a, a squad trouble novel. Um, I do believe I got it through Book Tasters, which is a site or a page, sorry, on Twitter, where they offer you free books to review them. And I just, I really loved it. It's um, a high school that's chosen by a company, well, several high schools, that compete testing, I guess, war technology. So they kind of fight each other in a simulation. And then the best school comes out on top. But anyway, it's starting with the main character school versus another school. And then from like the next book will be the winning school against that winning school and so on until the end. But uh, it's called a squad treble or treble squad novel because that's the name of the squad the main character is in and that one is by k benson i really enjoy when i get the free books like that that turn out to be like a five-star book it's just i mean free books fantastic but when it's a really good book even better i, I do believe i'm gonna continue that series as well even though i'll have to pay for the next ones that's perfectly fine by me it's definitely worth it uh the next series um i actually only started reading it i got it from my library i only started reading it because the main character has the same name as me which i thought was neat uh it's not a very common name even though most people uh pronounce it the common way I guess you can say it's Liana where it's Liana but anyway I especially liked it because it was an audiobook so I could hear people actually saying it which I I enjoyed <laughs> but I don't know is that weird is it like narcissistic I enjoyed it because it's my name whatever um it's called Chasing Sunrise which is also a trilogy it's a vampire book which I enjoy vampire books um Probably my first taste of vampire books, besides like old school Christopher Pike books, would be Interview with a Vampire, that whole series, Anne Rice. Lovely. But anyway, this series, Chasing Sunrise, or the Sunrise Prophecy series. Um, it's by em, uh, yeah, Emily Ma. It's by Emily Ma. And fantastic. My library actually only had the first book in the series. So if I want to continue it, I'd have to buy the rest. Um, and in this series, it's the main character had been turned to a vampire, but somehow 
every night when she's about to turn into a vampire, she, I don't know, kind of wishes it away and doesn't end up becoming a vampire, but she still has some vampire traits, but isn't fully a vampire. So then it's, you know, the powers that be trying to find her and see what's happening, if they should basically research her or kill her for being different. So quite interesting. And I don't know I'm saying this a lot, but I'll probably continue it too. I mean, hopefully my library gets the rest of the series or at least the next book. But if they don't, I think I would get it anyway, which really funny since I only started reading it because of the main character's name, but we'll still continue it. Now, the next book's kind of different. <laughs> it's actually the Book of Adam and Eve, which is, I guess, a book from the Bible, but wasn't sanctioned as part of the Bible. But anyway, it's basically, well, their whole story, really, what happened to them in Eden after they were kicked out of Eden, which was interesting. Um, I think what I liked about it so much was just, I mean, they're kind of bumbling idiots, but it's, like, because they don't know any better. So it's just kind of showing that everyone needs to learn, even from the beginning. So, interesting. Again, I don't know how much I would count on it being part of the Bible. I'm not, like, a big Bible reader or anything. I just find it interesting how some books of the Bible are considered part of the Bible and some aren't. Kind of arbitrary really. Now the next book, um, it's an older book, but I hadn't read it before. I haven't even seen the movie. It's Bridge to Terabithia, which I don't know, maybe it's a common book because of the movie, but it's basically these kids make up this land, like a fairy tale land with their imagination. Um, the one kid happens to pass away and it's the other one dealing with his grief of the loss of his friend, which is very touching. Um, again, I haven't seen the movie, but the book is by Katherine Patterson and just a great job writing. Wonderful. And uh, the next book is one of my uh, self-help books. I sometimes listen to them at work, motivation-wise, I guess, but it's um, The Game of Life and How to Play It, which is just kind of motivational, really. So I enjoyed that especially during blah days at work where you need the motivation. Um, and it's by Florence, was it Florence Scovelshin? I'm not sure if that's how it's pronounced. I'm so awful with names. Anyway, the next book, I've done a separate video of, um, I will link it below as well, just if you want to know more about the book, because I'm only giving brief little snippets right now, just time-wise, I don't want to be here all day. I'm sure you don't want to be here all day. But the next book is Not That I'd Kiss a Girl, which again, if you want to see more about, link will be below. Now, Not That I'd Kiss a Girl is uh, by Lil O'Brien, and it's a memoir about how she came out and uh, basically how she knew she was gay and her journey. Very touching, but also quite funny. She is hilarious. Just her writing style, beautiful. Now this one book um, took a while to read or listen to it. It was an audio book, but mostly because Jara and I were listening to it together. So it was more like if our schedules were matched up, that kind of thing. But it's the Tibetan Book of Living and Dying. And again, it's more kind of motivational, like how to live your life, um, success tips, how to be prepared for death, that kind of thing, which was actually quite neat. It's a Tibetan Buddhist kind of book, so very neat to hear their, their ways, I guess. Uh, this book I also have <laughs> another video for, uh, so I'll link it below as well. Man, I have a lot linked below. Um, it's called After We Were Stolen by Brooke Bathus, which was uh, basically, uh, it's fiction, I just feel like true when I say it's kids that escaped a cult, but fiction. Um, <laughs> so they escaped a cult, and it's basically the aftermath, uh, the main character trying to come to terms with everything. Uh, she thought she was born into this family, but she was kidnapped and 
a lot of her other siblings were too. So it's like her journey dealing with that basically in the aftermath. But if you want to hear more about it, the link will be below. Oh, this book. I know there's been a lot of media about. It's I'm Glad My Mom Died by Jeanette McCurdy. Fantastic. Wonderful. I always try to read at least one memoir type of book a year. This year I happened to read a few and this one and then Lil O'Brien's Not That I'd Kiss a Girl. Definitely the best memoirs that I read this year. Um, I feel like we all know Jeanette McCurdy's story by now, just the abuse she suffered from her mom, her family, working at Nickelodeon. Uh, she is a writer, I will say, just her storytelling, phenomenal. Uh, she does mention at one part in the book that she did want to be a screenwriter, but her mom kind of poo-pooed it, so she never pursued it. Now, I do think she should continue just based on how she wrote the book. I don't know how much of it was ghostwriters or anything like that, but I, I do feel like it was her writing it um, based on interviews I did see. But definitely give it a read. One of my favorite books this year, I would say. Now this last book, um, <laughs> pretty much the month of December, I only listen to or read Christmas books. I don't know why. I, I mean, I enjoy Christmas, but I'm not overly a Christmas person, celebrating wise. But this one, I enjoyed it. It was, I mean, rom-com vibes if it were to be a movie, which I actually think it would make a good movie. It's called Just Date and See, and it's by Portia, uh, Portia McIntosh. And it's uh, this girl, woman, <laughs> She all of a sudden has her house full for the holidays. She wanted it to be like a nice, light, easygoing Christmas by herself or basically just with her mom. And now all of a sudden her mom's living with her, her sister's visiting, her dad and his family's coming over. Just chaos ensues and she kind of wants some peace and quiet. So she says, oh, sorry guys, I already have all these plans doing these other events, so I'll, I'll be here when I can, but I have these events, and basically her events is on a dating app. She just clicked yes to all the Christmas events they had happening. So she's going to all these events, and basically it's, will she meet someone, what happens? Anyway, it's really cute. Like I said, rom-com vibes, just really lighthearted and fun. Uh, anyway, those were my top books of the year. Um, I read 50 books. Hope that I'll read more this year, but we'll see. I mean, you never know with my schedule. But those are my favorite. Like I said, I think the Jeanette McCurdy one was my absolute favorite this year. So if you're going to read any books off of that list, check hers out for sure. Um, again, check out those all links below if you want more details or just to read the synopsis of the books and the article I wrote. But otherwise, thanks for hanging out with me.